as you listen. Psalm 32. A little verse here that I want to use tonight in Psalm 32. And uh, I'm going to bring you a thought about it this evening. And it's verse 9. Psalm 32, verse number 9. Everybody looking at it? Be ye not as the horse. Or the Lord telling you not to be like a horse. What about that? Or as the mule. Have you ever known anybody that was like a mule? You ever heard somebody say, he's stubborn as a mule? <laughs> she, stubborn as a mule. Or he. Which y'all thinks more stubborn, men or? Yeah, okay. Be, a little marriage counseling right here after church. Look here. Or as the mule, which have no understanding. That's what's the matter with you stubborn people. You ain't got no sense. No understanding. <laughs> whose, mouth, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. I've never heard Joel Osteen preach on that verse. Uh, be not as the mule, which have no understanding, as the horse, whose mouth must be held in, lest they come near unto thee. I want to preach tonight on horse sense. Horse sense. We've all heard the phrase, horse sense. All our life, well, just use, use a little horse sense. Where'd that come from? Does that mean that horses have a little bit of sense? Uh, that they're smarter than some animal? Maybe, I don't know. Or does, it, or does it compare us to a horse? Maybe some way. It does here. But... Um, uh, somebody said this, horse sense is something that a horse has that makes him smart enough not to bet on humans. That may be, I don't know. Uh, did you hear about the guy this week is in the news? No joke. I think he's in North Carolina, down here, down there, east somewhere. This guy went into a, a jail. He was a pastor and he's visiting the jail with his Bibles and they found out he was smuggling drugs in to the jail and them suboxone strips in his Bible. He was not a pastor. He was a fake pastor and got busted. And they put it all up. That fella lacked a little horse sense. Sure did. He lacked a little horse sense. Um, they said, uh, woman up in West Virginia, she told the cops, she called him out there and she said, I want y'all to do something over this, this road up here. Uh, said that, that deer crossing sign up there is going to have to be took down. There's so many deer getting run over here that y'all are going to have to make them things cross somewhere else. That's true. That's what they said. Uh, that woman lacked what we call a little horse sense. Amen. Uh, somebody said this. Thomas Edison, actually, one of the smartest men inventor-wise, he said, hard work and stick to and common sense are the three major things that a person must have. You, you do not have to have an education, but if you're going to succeed in life, you got to have hard work, stick to itiveness. You won't quit. You just will not quit, and common sense. Somebody else said, common sense is not too common anymore. Isn't that right? Uh, we get, uh, today, we get so much information that we lose common sense, and that's sad. Uh, they said that common sense is genius dressed in work clothes. And I believe that too. I believe, I believe there's a lot of people that are success in life because they got common sense. Just, I don't know, I guess you're born with it or something, but uh, you got common sense rather than just having education. Now, it's good if you got both, but if you got to choose, common sense will help you a whole lot more. So when I say horse sense tonight, I'm talking about uh, common sense. Here's what a horse will do. Some of y'all got horses. You know about horses. They say a horse will. Uh, they learn how to get food. They know how to go where the food trough is. That, that's, they got enough sense to do that. They know how to run from fire or danger. They know how to respond to the rider. You know, they learn. You can train a horse when you G and haw and all that. You know what they used to say. But now you lay used to pull the rein one way and they go that way and pull it the other way and they go that way, but then they got to where you just neck, you just lay it on their neck and they go this way and that way and you do something where you kick them in the gut, you know, and they're supposed to do certain things and all of that. Horses can't learn how, how to do that. 
Uh, some of them have a massive frame, six foot six and 3,200 pounds. Some of them think, Lordy mercy, uh, what, a, what a monster, brother. Um, and they say that, that common sense, horse sense is this. In a nutshell, this is gonna be short, so listen. Common sense is the ability to make good judgments or decisions on ordinary things. Have you ever met somebody that just got a talent for just messing up everything they touch? And app just, I mean, they just do everything wrong. And, you, and it's like they get one mess after another mess after another mess. And somebody said rightly, the definition of insanity, listen, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over, hoping for a different result. If I go this way, I'm gonna go out that door. And if I go this way another time, I'm gonna go out that door. And if I go this way another time, I'm going out that door. And if I go this way 40,000 more times, I'm going out that door. That means if you go out and get high and smoke pot and get drunk and get in fight, you're gonna get in trouble. If you go out and smoke pot and drink and get in fights again, you're gonna get in trouble again. If you sin against God, you're gonna get in trouble. If you commit adultery, you're gonna get in trouble. If you steal something from work, you're gonna get in trouble. You know how many times you're gonna get in trouble? As many times as you keep doing it. Common sense needs to kick in somewhere. Hey, hey, this is crazy. I'm not gonna do this no more. You know, they say down at the courthouse, uh, if you've ever been to court with somebody, all, just about 90% of them is repeat offenders. The same people. Same people going through the system over and over and over. And uh, you know, uh, after, after you get your teeth knocked out and your brain's half knocked out and diseases and car wrecks and can't got no license or have, can't drive a car or nothing, wouldn't you think after so many, you know, well, well, I've had a little bad luck. Let's go party. No, no, it ought to kick in on you sometime or another. Hey, I'm an idiot. I need to change the way I'm thinking. I need to change the way I'm doing. I need to make a change. Common sense ought to tell you some things. Now, let's just take a little minute tonight, give you this little brief outline on common sense. Number one, common sense should give you horse sense, should give you an understanding of the depravity of a sinner. We are born into sin. Do you get it? Do you get that? I know people say, not my little baby. Yes, your little baby. Your little baby is born into sin. Not only into sin, you're born with sin in you. There's something in you when you come into this world uh, that, that, that is a sin. Now, the world don't believe that. You know the major psychologists and psychiatrists the world don't believe that? You know what they believe? They believe when you're, when you're born into this world, I ain't got no, uh, I might have here, yeah. Uh, they, they believe when you're born into this world that you're a blank piece of paper, that you come in totally neutral and actually a good, good uh, something or another, animal, or evolved animal, and that everything you do in life has been programmed in you and you're a, you're a product of your environment. And they believe that. Now, what they don't understand is when you come into this world, you have sin nature in you. You've got to understand that. You've got to. I, I pray all the time, Lord, get the sin out of me, get the sin. But I know deep, deep, deep down inside me, there's that little nature of sin. And you've got it too, buddy. And you meet one of these big shot, highfalutin church ladies that think that gives you the impression she's never done nothing. Don't be fooled by that crowd one second. Every person in this world tonight, except the Lord Jesus Christ, has sin born inside them. Now, people don't believe that. That old, old Frankster there, let me see Frankster here. Let me use him for an example. Come here, Frankster. Are you being good? Uh, you, don't, you ain't got no shoes on, dude. All right, Frankster. Uh, he, listen, uh, he, he's buttering up to me now for waking me up in the middle of the night. Look, Frankster, look at all them mean people. Give them the mean face. Give them the mean face. They're mean. All them people's mean. And old Frankster here, you may not believe this. But they say, oh, everybody, oh, isn't he sweet? Oh, isn't he sweet? The truth is, little Frankster has a sin nature. The other day, he, he was trying to get something, and we took him away from him, and he went, oh. I said, there it is, Kelly. Did you see it? There it is. There's that sin nature coming out. You, do you all remember when it first hit you that your kid was a sinner? 
I don't know why you believe they wasn't. But somehow or another, every woman thinks, not my kid. Yeah, hey, you just wait a little bit, but You don't have to teach a kid to lie. You know you don't have to teach them to lie. You never have to say, now here's the way you tell a lie. You say, uh, did you touch this chair? And then you say, no, I didn't. They automatically know how to do that. Where they learn that? No, mama, I didn't do it. It's in them, buddy. They're born with it. They're born with it. You, have a, a, you, you ain't got no common sense if you don't understand the, the depravity of a sinner. Little Frankster is a sinner. He is a sinner. Don't let him fool you with this sweet little baby face. Uh, look, when that little brat gets a little bit bigger, he'll scream and holler if he don't get his way. He'll put himself first in front of all the other kids. He'll reach and grab something that ain't his and take a toy away from another kid. Yes, sir, brother. And as he gets a little bigger, he'll lie. They all do. I've seen them lie right here in the church, you know. I've seen them lie. They'll, they'll, you, you can, they'll, so they'll be a crying, 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 crying. They're screaming bloody murder. And, uh-oh, you want to come back? All right. <laughs> you like it up here preaching, don't you? You like it up here preaching better than you do. Because she mean. She mean, ain't she? Give her the mean face. Give her the mean face. <laughs> he can do a good mean face. Give her the mean face, Frankster. There you go mean you know what you know what just just what i'm saying i've seen them gonna and they go wah, 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 wah. and the mama gets up and starts going out the door and they just start smiling all the way out the door there ain't nothing wrong with them there ain't nothing wrong with them they've already learned how to manipulate a 40 year old woman and they ain't two years old and she mama's so dumb she don't even listen if you pick them up Here's when they ought to cry when you start out with them. That's when they ought to cry because they know there's hell to pay back out in the hall somewhere. <laughs> we had one one time. We had one to get up there and marry him one time and his mom and daddy was not, and, 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 and he'd be cutting up in church and they'd take up and his daddy would go out with him like that and all the way out he'd be screaming, I'll be good, I'll be good, I'll be good. <laughs> but it's too late, son. Judgment day had done come. But I'm telling you tonight, we all have a sin nature. Every one of us. Amen? We all do. People talk about, now you're going to have to go this time, Frank, so I got some other stuff to talk about. Listen, uh, listen. We all have that sin nature. Every single one of us. People say, oh, my, my little boy, uh, my little boy, I, I, he's, he's, he's 11, he's 10 years old, and I saw him looking at girls. Guess what? All little boys like to look at girls. If your little boy don't like to look at girls, you really got a problem. You really got one. All little girls like boys. And if they don't, you really got a problem. It's natural. It's in us. But that sin nature's in there too. And then we start abusing that natural attraction. and You know what God wants you to do? God wants you to grow up, live right, stay a virgin, get married, have a family, but sin messes all that up, don't it? It messes all that up. It messes everything up. You've got to understand the sin nature. You've got to understand, you know, I've heard people say, well, uh, well, I trust my kids. Well, I don't, I don't know why you'd say something like that. I don't trust your kids, I don't trust my kids, and I don't trust you, and I don't trust me. You know why? We have a sinful nature. And buddy, you put yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time, under the wrong circumstances. Uh, you're capable of committing any sin in the book. I'm telling you, common sense ought to tell you, you got a sin nature, people. Don't underestimate it. Don't underestimate it. Every problem in this world is because of sin. You can go into a, you can go into a, a community and build everybody a nice house and give them a nice TV and put carpet on the floor and come back two years later and it's ripped up and beer cans laying out in the parking lot and the TV's busted or stole. You know why? You don't fix sin from the outside in. It's got to be fixed from the inside out. That's right. Amen. You know why stuff stinks like Frankster? Sin. You say, Brother Danny, you don't really believe. I sure do. You explain it to me. How can you eat something that smells as good as cheesecake? <laughs> well, I ain't going to go with that illustration, but something happens to it while it's in you, don't it? You ruin it. That's your nasty sin nature.
nature, everything comes out of you stinks. Your breath, I mean, everything. Listen, buddy, hey, you're a sinner. That's completely opposite from what the world tries to teach our kids. And if you don't, all I can say is the proof's in the pudding, buddy. Raise a couple of kids and tell me they ain't got some sin nature inside them. You know what you got to do? You got to teach them right, keep it bridled. It's like Roundup. I tell Kelly, I said, just spray Roundup on it. You can't kill it. It's in there. Just spray it, keep it beat down like weeds out in your yard. Just keep it beat down and hope they'll pray and live right and get the victory over it. Secondly, horse sense tells you about the understanding, the, the drawing of the Spirit. The drawing of the Spirit. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 7 and 8, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. You know, he's a drawer. The Lord's drawing you. I know, I know people that say, well, the Lord's not speaking to me. Oh, yes, he is. If the Spirit of God wasn't drawing you, you wouldn't even be here tonight. If the Spirit of God wasn't talking to you, he's talking to every person in here tonight. There ain't no doubt in my mind that while I'm preaching, there's another voice talking to every person in here saying, boy, what about this? What about that? You need to do something about this. That's you. you know, he's talking to you while I'm preaching. Common sense teaches you that the Holy Spirit. I'll never forget that was one of the most amazing things that I learned when I first got saved that I'd be sitting there and, and a man be up preaching. I'll never forget Brother Ed preaching out there at the camp meeting. I'd just be sitting there and there'd be 200 people sitting in there and it was like while he was preaching, the Lord was talking to me and talking to me and it felt like I was the only person in there. I mean, I, it really did. And I thought, that's the Lord talking to me because sometimes it'd be stuff he wasn't even talking about and he was convicting me and convicting me. One of the great things about preaching, it's supernatural. The man ain't, I ain't. I'm nothing but a human being just like you. But real Bible preaching is supernatural. It'll, 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 uh, it does stuff that we don't plan or think about. That's what makes preaching different from teaching. You can get up a lesson and teach a little bit, and, and that's good, but real preaching, when a man gets plugged up just right, is supernatural. There's things come out during the preaching. That's why, that's why these preachers that just use their iPad in the pulpit are just trying to impress you with how hip and cool they are, and they're not really trying to follow a good Bible preaching. Say amen right there. I'm talking about you church people too. Bring your Bible to church. You play that stupid thing the other 23 hours a day. You can read, bring your Bible to church and read it with me. What if I say flip over there and hold your finger there and look at another verse? You can't do it on that stupid thing. So bring your Bible to church. Say amen right there. Anyway, I, I, you've heard me tell these stories. I know a bunch of them. I, there was a boy. I didn't know this. I didn't know this till uh, uh, good night, just about three years ago. And it was 20, over 20 years ago. Uh, you know how they some of these people... Uh, there's some, some people that are uh, super particular about their hair, and mostly that time it's women, but sometimes you meet a man that's super particular. You can't touch their hair. You just, oh, quit, quit, quit. And they do like that. I've seen women come into church out there, and the wind's blowing, and they walk like this. Because they don't want the wind to blow. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, right? And, and I guess women, that's natural for a woman, but not for a man. It's a little weird. For a man. See, you just mess up. I can't just mess it up. And then I can just fix it with my fingers. See, you just fix it with your fingers. Some of y'all don't got that problem, but hallelujah, praise God. And you know what? This guy was super particular about his hair. And I didn't know it. I didn't know it. I didn't know this until three years ago. And this guy told me we was eating lunch. He said, you know a man named something, 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 something? I said, no, don't. He said, he told me one time. He said, somebody brought him to New Man up in Marion and year one night and he had never been there before. I had never seen him before. I still wouldn't know him if he walked in the door. And he said he was he couldn't stand. He was ready to fight somebody if they touched his hair. I mean he said, You leave my hair alone like that, you know. And he said, I mean there's probably five hundred people sitting in there on a Sunday evening. And he said, I was running around preaching like a maniac. And he was about five rows back and he said, I took off running down through there and stopped and put my hand right on that guy's head. That's what he said. He said, I didn't know it. He said he liked to die. I do not remember doing that. I don't even remember doing that to nobody. But he said, that's what I did. And you know what? Later, that guy got saved and now is a preacher and pastor in a church somewhere up in the mountain. I don't know if it had anything to do with it or not. Somebody said, help me give you your testimony. Well, I really thought I was something. The one night I went to church and the preacher run back there and laid hands on my hair and messed it up. And God, I don't know if that had anything to do with it or not. But you know what? Preaching something like that, y'all. 
It's amazing how that the preacher will say something. I've heard people say, Brother Danny, who told you? I said, told me, told me what? Somebody told you, didn't they? Told me what? That I've been, well, I wouldn't have known it if you hadn't have told me. Don't, sometimes you better off just shut up. Pray about it and go home. I heard a guy one time stood up and give a testimony and told all the bad stuff he'd been doing. When he got home, his wife left him that night. Sometimes just shut up and confess it to God, amen. Uh, just confess it to the Lord and forget about it. Uh, but I'm telling you what, brother, listen, uh, it's the drawing of the Spirit. The Spirit of God touches real Bible preaching. Common sense tell you that. Then let me say this uh, thirdly tonight. Common sense, horse sense, is understanding the desire of the Savior. What's that? 1 Peter 3.18, for Christ hath once suffered for the sins, the just for the unjust. Romans 5 and verse 8, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us in my place. Revelation 3.20, he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I mean, can you, can you understand that? Can you understand that Christ died in your place? Get that through your head. You say, well, Brother Danny, we all know that. No, no, no. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised if you went out here and stopped the first 500 people you meet in Morgan and tomorrow and said, are you going to heaven? Most of them would say yes. And if you said why, they'd say, well, I try to live a good life. They sure would. They sure would. Now, listen, if that's your mentality, you lack common sense. You don't go to heaven by living a good life. You ain't living a good life. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none good. No, not one. I don't care how you say, well, my grandma, if anybody made it, she did. Well, no, that ain't the right kind of attitude. Grandma's a sinner just like everybody else. Grandma just had sins she didn't talk about. You know, see how that dip. <laughs> Some of them old grandma. <laughs> Ask her one time, they said, Grandma, will smoking send you to hell? One of them old grandma, she said, Sure will. <laughs> That's the way they are. You know, if you, anybody burn something tastes that good, I'll go to hell. <laughs> that, oh, oh, Grandma had her sins, don't you doubt it. Well, Grandma had her sins, I guarantee you. Grandma had her sins. No, not Grandma. Yes, Grandma, your blessed Grandma. Now, my mom, you've heard me, I brag on my mom. They ain't hardly a Sunday goes by, I don't mention mom. And I never saw my mom do anything wrong. Never. I never saw her commit one sin. But that don't mean she did. She'd get a little judgmental sometimes. And she was married and had a crush on Elvis. She did. She thought Elvis was the best looking man that ever been in the world. I said, Mom, he's full of the devil. Now, Danny, son, he sings How Great Thou Art. I said, Mom, he's wicked. Uh, but you know what? They all got sin. Everybody, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Understand the desire of the Savior. When he died on the cross, that's what I'm talking about hell this morning. If there ain't no hell, why'd Jesus die, people? Why'd he die? Why did he die if there ain't no hell? That's a pretty drastic measure for, for God to give his own son out of heaven and let him beat him to death. It's pretty drastic. Last thing I'll say and I'm through is understanding the decision of salvation. The Bible said in John 1, 12, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Today is a day of salvation. I did it when I was 18 years old. You can do it tonight. Are you sure you're saved? Are you positive you're saved? I know a lot of people go up and they say, well, I went to Alder when I was in Bible school and all my friends went and, I, and, I, and we prayed, but I don't know for sure if I'm really saved. Settle it tonight. Make sure of it tonight. If you are saved and you've been sinning, you've been doing something wrong, 
First John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. Get down on your knees here tonight and say, God, I am sorry. By your grace, I'm not going back and do that again. I ain't going back around that person that caused me to do that. I'm not going back to that place where I was drinking. I'm not going back to that place where I was gambling. I'm not going back to that place where we were uh, watching bad stuff on our phone or, or dirty movies or something, whatever, whatever. Hey, buddy, uh, repent. Understand the decision of salvation and turning from sin. Old George Whitfield, he was a moral, very moral man. George Whitfield, one of the greatest preachers in the history of the Christian church. He, he preached to his throat bled. They set out on a country, in a country, back then they didn't have airplanes and cars and stuff, but you could hear that guy a mile away on a clear night. He'd pre they'd preach, have them big heels around them, make them a little natural amphitheater, and people would sit out there and they said, you could hear that guy preach a mile away. And George Whitfield was very moral and, and lived a very moral life, even fasted and everything, but he wasn't even saved. And he met Charles Wesley, John Wesley's brother that, that wrote a lot of the hymns. And Charles Wesley gave him a book and Whitfield started reading that book and the more he read that book, the more he got under conviction. And the more he got under conviction. And the more he got under conviction. And one day it hit him. He thought, my goodness, I'm not going to heaven just trying to be good. I'm not good. I need to be born again. And that boy got down, got saved, got born again. And he traveled all over the world preaching, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. And they said he'd stand up and cry while he's preaching. That's another thing that's missing from this modern day preaching. We'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. Tears. It's all like, you're cool and God loves you, man. God, fulfill your purpose. Find your purpose. A bunch of junk like that. You don't ever hear them stand up and just bawl and have a deep guilt of sin and want to get their heart right. And George Whitfield, he preached all over the world. And he told people, you got to be born again. You got to be born again. And he'd stand up and start crying. It wasn't fake neither. It was real tears. And, and at one time he told his congregation, he said, they said, why do you cry? He said, I cry for you because you won't even cry for you. And by the time he got done, everybody in the church was, was just weeping. People's heart was a lot softer back in them days than they are now. People's hard nowadays, buddy. People's hard. You take them video presentations I do, if you'd have done that in the church 50 years ago, people would have stayed up all night. They couldn't even sleep. It tore them all to pieces. Now people just sit there and say, wow, getting bad, ain't it? Let's go eat. That's our attitude now. But old Whitfield, man, he preached and he preached and he preached till his throat would bleed, literally. And he said, you must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. And I asked him one time, I said, preacher, why do you always preach you must be born again? He said, because you must be born again. He had it right. That's common sense, understanding the decision of salvation. Well, I'm done tonight. I don't know what God spoke to you about. I don't. But I think maybe about two-thirds of us probably should be in this altar tonight saying, God, just give me horse sense. I don't want to be like a mule that you have to put a bit and bridle in and jerk you around. God, give me some common sense and help me to do right. Let's stand by our head for prayer. Everybody standing, we'll not sing. We'll just take just a minute here. Miss Desi will come. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Don't be embarrassed to come to the altar. Don't. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Every one of us probably need to be up here. She's playing tonight, and while she plays, just slip out of your seat. Come on, come on, just get out of your seat and come right now. That's right, that's right. Others, 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 others. You know what you need to do. You know what you need to do. Come on. Amen. 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 Let God speak to your heart. Let God speak to your heart tonight. Every head bowed, every eye closed. People are praying. You let God speak to your heart. You let God speak to your heart. Let's pray for a minute. Let's pray for a minute before we go here tonight. Let's just pray. Lord, just give me common sense. 
Oh, I don't ask to be a genius. Just give me common sense to make the right choices, the right decisions. You'll live longer, you'll live healthier, and you'll live happier if you'll just ask God for horse sense. Be not as the horse or as the mule, which don't have no understanding. Have to put a bit and bridle in their mouth. Settle it tonight. Whatever it is you need to settle. God will help you if you'll do that. Let God speak to your heart. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your many, many blessings. I pray, oh God, in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts tonight. Help us, Lord, to realize that you're not, you ain't gonna hurt us. You're not gonna hurt us, Lord. Lord, if we do, we'll be the beneficiaries. Lord, help us, give us the privilege of serving you and doing right. Help us to turn from all sin to hate sin. Anything, any sin, not just other people's sin, our sins. Help us to hate our sins, our wickedness, our laziness, our gossiping tongue, our, our lack of burden, no, no vision, no witnessing, no soul winning. God, forgive us of being wicked, God, not caring about other people. Lord, forgive us of our sin, not giving like we should, not praying like we should. Help us, Lord. Help us, God, do better. God bless our church in 2019. Cause it to go and grow and prosper for the glory of God. Well, thank you for what you do. Bless every single person here tonight. Lord, meet the need of every life. I can't, but you can. And I trust that you will. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. 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 All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody got something you need to say? Anybody? Right quick. Three at a time here. That's good. Amen, brother. What, Brandy? Praise the Lord, sister. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm jealous. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's good. It's good to see somebody happy like that. All right, who over here? Amen. Amen. Ain't that something? She was raised Catholic in New York, y'all. Ain't that something? 